Good afternoon and welcome to the Department of Sport, Tourism and Uniform Services. My name's Tim Craven and I'm the uh, head of this outstanding department. We offer a range of courses that prepare our students uh, for their next steps into either higher education, direct into employment or onto a higher level apprenticeship. We provide dynamic and responsive curriculum covering BTEC courses in travel and tourism, sport, sports science, uniform protective services, and also an A-level in physical education. You're going to hear about each of these fantastic courses shortly. The majority of our BTEC courses can be studied either as a single, which is the equivalent to one A-level, and we'll take four sessions, four lessons a week. Uh, a double, which is equivalent to two A-levels, which will take eight lessons a week. Uh, and a triple, equivalent to three A-levels and uh, 12 lessons a week. Our BTEC courses provide the same UCAS higher education points, entry points, as their equivalent A-levels do. We have a team of highly accomplished and experienced teachers within their areas of expertise. Many have worked in the sector that they are now preparing our students to be successful in, and most are either examiners or external assessors uh, within the awarding body or for the awarding body that their courses um, that they teach on. This ensures that they are fully up to date with all the best practice that is available. Our results across all courses are excellent, including 100% pass rates and outstanding achievement of high grades, placing many of our students' achievements in the top 15% in the country. Our department specific uh, facilities, on campus facilities, are excellent. We have access to 10 state-of-the-art teaching rooms, with each course having their own bespoke teaching room. There's a breakout stu stroke study area, a five badminton court size sports hall, indoor climbing wall, fitness room, and on-site sports pitch. All of this is in addition to the other specialist facilities that we access to off-site to support our students' learning, achievement, and experiences of sport, tourism, and uniform protective services. Our teachers bring the world of work into the classroom, making learning and assessment experiences extremely relevant and purposeful. We feel that it is, it is vital, uh, of vital importance really, that our students are able to experience working with local, regional, and in some cases, uh, national employers and universities in order to enrich all of their experiences and, and inspire them to go on to uh, even greater things. We believe that our, our students, are, can't be what they uh, are not able to see. And as such, our students have access to uh, a wide range of experiences beyond the course, uh, such as sports leadership, volunteering, and work placements. We're very proud of what our students achieve and what they progress onto. Sorry, of what they progress onto and what we do as a team to prepare them for their next successful steps. I hope you enjoy your open event experience with us this afternoon. This is for you so that you are able to make the best informed choice that you can about your next steps. Please use the text chat to post any questions that you have. And myself, Jen, the assistant head for sport, and Steve, the assistant head for our, our protective services courses, will answer these at the end of the presentations. OK, that's it from me. So over now to the course specific presentations, starting with sport and PE, then on to travel and tourism and finally uniform protective services. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I hope you are well and looking forward to potentially being one step closer to making Blackpool 6 your next step in your educational journey. I am Jen and I'm here to talk you through the two BTEC sport options we have here at college. Firstly, I would like to introduce you to the sports staff that potentially may be delivering your sessions. On the far left, we have Tim Craven, who is head of department. Moving from left to right, then we have Jen Connor, and that's me. And I'm one of the sport and sports science tutors here at college. Moving along, we then have Stephen Gibson, followed by Claire Huggan and Stephanie Chunga. Moving firstly on to the BTEC sport provision that we offer here at college. With regards to sports, we offer both a double and triple sport. If you decide to study double sport, you would have eight lessons a week divided up by two members of staff and you would add a third subject to accompany your studies. In the past, students have picked BTEC Business, Single Science, Psychology and maybe even IT. 
These provide excellent and successful combinations. We also offer the triple sport where you would study 12 lessons a week and this would be divided by three members of staff who would all teach separate content. A fabulous addition to your sports lessons is a separate qualification called the Community Sports Leaders Award. This is one lesson a week that provides amazing opportunities to improve communication skills, leadership skills and once completed progresses into the Higher Sports Leaders Award in year two. This qualification looks fabulous on UCAS applications, job applications, and is a fantastic talking point during interviews. As you can see, the Sport BTEC offers a wide variety of units for you to study. This allows for you to have a broad range of knowledge in many areas that can allow you to understand which areas of sport you may want to focus further studies on at university. If you look at the left-hand column, they are specifically the units you will study as a double student. And if you look at the column on the right, they are the additional units you would study as a triple student. In terms of how you demonstrate your learning, they are categorised into three areas. Firstly, we have internal units. These are units delivered by staff that are marked by staff. You could be asked to produce reports, posters, presentations, practical reviews, and you could be observed completing tests and recording data. Next, we have external assessments. These are units that are delivered by staff but marked by the exam board. You will be given a scenario two weeks before to analyse before you are given questions to answer under exam conditions. You can take notes into this assessment. Finally, we have external exams. These are units that are, that are exams sat under exam conditions. You will need to know all the content to answer all the exam questions from short answer questions to long answer questions that show in-depth understanding of topics. In addition to the course content, we, we also have many exciting enrichment opportunities to offer here at college, and more specifically sport. These range from the sport academies in football, netball and basketball, to work experience in the community. As you can see from the images on your screen, we enrich the course with university trips, educational visits and volunteering opportunities. Some of these pictures also show our students who are involved in coaching, quali coaching qualifications and first aid courses. Our excellent grades allow our students to secure their first choice universities and more specifically their first choice courses. Our students have progressed onto sports development and coaching degrees, sports nutrition and psychology degrees and sports exercise science degrees. Many of our students have also added the additional teaching year onto their original degree to allow them to go into teaching. We have also had students who leave college and entered the world of employment in Blackpool as development offers and teaching assistants. As you can see, the second half of the presentation is discussing the separate BTEC sports, sports science course that we offer here at college. As you can see, for this course, we offer a slightly different combination. Here we offer a single, a double and a triple. The single qualification consists of four lessons a week and similarly to the sport course, the double is eight lessons a week and the triple is 12 lessons a week. You would also have the... the the pleasure of the Community Sports Leaders Award that would progress to the Higher Sports Leaders Award in year two. As you can see, the BTEC Sports Science offers a wide variety of units for you to study. This allows for you to have a broad range of knowledge in many areas and can allow you to understand which, areas of, which specific areas of sports science you may want to focus your further studies on at university. If you look at the left-hand column, they are specifically the units you would study as a single student. If you look at the middle column, these would be the units you would study as a double student. And if you look at the column on the right, they are the additional uh, units you would study if you were a triple student. In terms of the assess assessment methods, these follow the same patterns as the BTEC sport course we offer. The combination allows for learners to show off their knowledge and understanding in many different ways and mirrors the assessment methods of most university courses that our students move on to after their time here. In addition to the course content, we also have many other exciting enrichment opportunities to offer you here at college and more specifically through the sports science course. We have a fantastic link with Cumbria and Lancaster University where they deliver sports rehabilitation, sports therapy and physiotherapy courses. We take our students for first-hand practical sessions in their rehab clinic where they have the opportunity to complete our course content and gain valuable experience about their courses 
and their careers where they potential that that they are potentially interested in. We also have fantastic links with UCLan where we use their laboratory facilities in order to allow our students to gain and analyze valuable data for their research projects. In terms of progression routes for our students who study sports science, in the first instance, they allow the students to access all the courses that a sports student would. However, in addition, they would also be able to gain better access to sports therapy and sports rehabilitation courses. We have also had students accepted onto physiotherapy courses. However, they also need some specific work experience in the industry to allow them to get on that course. Finally, I'm giving you a brief look at our college practical kit. This kit is provided by Pro-Am Kits and, is an on, and we have an online purchasing system. The jacket and the purple t-shirt are the compulsory items with the branded pants and shorts being optional items. I hope this has answered any questions you may have. Thank you for listening. And welcome to this virtual open day presentation for A-Level PE. I'm going to give you an overview of the course and explain what it's like to study A-Level PE here at Blackpool 6. First, I'm going to introduce you to the A-Level PE team. So top left, we have Tim Craven, head of department. Bottom left, we have Jen Connor, assistant head of department. And on the right hand side, we have the two A-Level PE teaching staff, Claire, and then at the top, myself, Steph. Here at Blackpool Sixth Form, we work on a philosophy of self-paced learning. Okay, so this supports um, personalised learning programme. Uh, it allows for greater in-depth feedback, works on an individual level, um, working to a student's strengths and their own current experiences. Um, in order to be able to do this, um, we have small group sizes for our A-level PE course, which again supports this personalised learning pattern. You get more feedback from staff, better interaction with the tutors. Both myself and Claire are examiners for AQA A-level PE and have been for a number of years. So we both have a vast array of experience in the subject and we bring that to the classroom and share this knowledge with our students, which allows them to be successful in their exams. On the A-Level PE course, there is a requirement for you to be competing in one chosen activity, either as a practical performer or a practical coach. And I'll explain that in a little bit more detail later on. OK, so what does A-Level PE involve? Um, it covers a vast array of topics which can mainly be split into three sections. So the first one is the body looking at anatomy and physiology exercise physiology and biomechanics. This area of study links with careers as personal trainers, athletes, sport therapists, nutritionists, physiotherapists and analysts. And throughout the course, um, we make links with the content that we cover with future possible career routes. The second area that we look at is the mind. So that looks at skill acquisition and sports psychology. And this has links with becoming PE teachers, sports coaches and sports psychologists. And the final section we look at is society. So the role of technology um, in sport today and sport and society, both looking at the history of sport and modern day issues in sport and these have links with becoming a sport development officer, a sport lawyer or journalist, um, getting involved in marketing or PR in sport and becoming um, involved in writing uh, sport policy documents. So the A-Level P course is a very diverse course. It covers a broad range of topics um, which will um, play to a lot of different interests that people have and it has direct links to employment. So the structure of the course, the course is split into three um, sections. The first section on the left there is your exam. So 70% of your final grade will come from sitting two exam papers um, after two years of studying A-level PE. You will then have 15% of your course comes from that practical element that I mentioned before, which is an assessment in one activity as either a performer or as a coach. 
and then you will complete a 15% piece of coursework on a chosen activity, um, again, as a performer or as a coach. Uh, after this presentation, there will be a Q&A session where you can discuss if the activity that you currently partake in can be assessed at A-Level PA. OK, so we talked earlier at um, how each element and uh, section of the course can link to future employment. Many of our AVLP students go on to university to study to study, sorry, at some of the top universities such as Loughborough, Leeds, Edge Hill, Durham, Liverpool, um, courses such as coaching, physios, nutritionists, psychologists. Um, we do have some students who also go on to study at high apprenticeships, so working straight into the um, working environment, looking at personal training, sport development officers, getting involved in the leisure industry. And again, uh, some people uh, go on to go straight into employment from studying A-level PE uh, in those named careers. Okay, so that's the end of this presentation. Uh, after this presentation, you will have a chance to ask any questions um, about the A-level PE course. And I hope that's given you um, a little insight into what A-level PE at Blackpool 6 is like. A very warm welcome to your Travel and Tourism Open Event 2020. Welcome to the most exciting and dynamic industry of the world. Travel and Tourism turns over billions every year and provides trillions of jobs worldwide and proving to be a thriving industry. Where do you want to be? What do you want to do? Meet the Travel and Tourism team. We have a wealth of industry knowledge and experience. Anna Pace, Rachel Attlee, Stacey Bibby, and Head of Department, Tim Craven. So what will you study on the Travel and Tourism course? Across the two year course, you will sample a variety of tourism related topics, giving you an insight and flavor of the different aspects of the travel and tourism industry. The qualification will help you gain knowledge and experience that will help you prepare for university or employment in a range of different job roles. You may be interested in tour operations or working in tourism development, or you may be interested in working in transportation or accommodation and catering. Whatever career path in this sector you are interested in, this course will help you build and develop the skills you need to make a success of higher education, employment or both. In the Travel and Tourism classroom, our classroom activities are fun and interactive, which include guest speakers, presentations, team building, debates, discussions, and the use of interactive technology. All of these develop skills socially and professionally. The Travel and Tourism course naturally lends itself to the inclusion of as many trips and visits domestically to experience different cities, towns and cultures. As an example of this, we run a trip to London where the student experiences the British Airways Cabin Crew Training Day. It also includes a West End show, sightseeing and shopping and much more. Travel and tourism students also have the opportunity of exciting overseas international trips. Previously, we have visited New York in the USA, Barcelona in Spain, Auschwitz in Poland, to name just a few. We pride ourselves at Blackpool 6 for having an extensive partnerships with many local travel and tourism providers such as the Pleasure Beach, the Blackpool Tower, Partington's, Sandcastle, NST, Strachan Travel, Premier Inn, just to name a few. The students have the invaluable face-to-face -face customer experiences and to learn the industry from the employee's perspective. Many of our students have secured employment following successful placements. Travel and tourism students are regularly placed, praised for their hard work, achievements, progression and attendance. We celebrate these with certificates and prizes. We also have a National BTEC Silver Winner Award 2020, Emily Broadbent.
Many of our students progress onto university. The popular universities with our students are Manchester Metropolitan, Leeds Beckett, John, Liverpool John Moores and UCLan Preston. You're able to study event management, tourism man management, international tourism management and many other related degrees. Employability in travel and tourism is so diverse, the choice is an exciting one. Many jobs allow you to the opportunity to travel the globe. The world is literally your oyster. Hopefully this has given you a small insight into the exciting world of travel and tourism. Please follow us on Facebook and Instagram and we really do hope to see you soon. Hi everyone, welcome to the virtual open event here at Blackpool Sick Form College. Uh, the one you're watching now is the public services, well, what will soon be the protective services here at Sick Form College. Uh, and I'm David and this is... Paul. <laughs> uh, and we're going to take you through these slides and hopefully they'll help you choose us in the future. So here we are. Uh, our head of department is Tim Craven. Uh, followed by the assistant head of the department, Steve Gibson. And we've got three public service teachers or protective service teachers in myself, Paul, on the left, David in the middle, and Anna on the far right. So just a bit of overview of the information that we, we have. Uh, we're extended diploma course. This means that in terms of UCAS points, if you're thinking of going to university, we are the equivalent to three A-levels. So UCAS points will have parity between uh, our course and A-levels. We also have the what we call the double award, which is the diploma course, and that gets you two A-levels. So if you wish to study protective services with us and a single of another course, then that is a possibility as well. Uh, one of our key selling points is that we have some opportunities, uh, and this links with another bullet point in terms of live learning that not many other places have. We do things with the police, with the army, we do army residentials, we do expeditions. Uh, we get we have a broad trip such as going to New York and Auschwitz over in Poland and not many colleges can say they can do that. Uh, and finally, we have a, a very, very good level of ex-students progressing into the public services, which hopefully um, when we can actually have in face-to-face -face events, you'll be able to meet some of them. For example, uh, one of our ex-students sent us a picture recently of him on HMS Prince of Wales um, aircraft carrier. So just thought we'd give an overview of a couple of the units. First one is Unit 11, Expedition Skills. So what's involved here is we look at the skills necessary to, do, to complete a successful overnight expedition, uh, looking at the navigation, the planning, uh, what you need to do in terms of uh, the prep, the food, uh, where you're going to camp, uh, as well as staying at Wadaka Scout Camp, which is a great little site, and doing a couple of decent walks around the trough of Boland, uh, culminating in Poilick Hill. And if we've time... There's always time for Walden's ice cream. Always. Another one of the new units is teamwork, leadership and communication. This is where you will test your leadership styles and look at different leadership styles used in the protective services, uh, which is ideal for careers and such arm reserves, where we'll look at different arm reserve scenarios. You'll also do some radio work, some team building work, uh, and hopefully we'll have our arm residential back, which is a, a two-night a two overnight stay uh, at... Old Car Army Camp in Liverpool, where we'll work with other students and army staff to achieve some common goals. So when you come to onto our course, Protective Services, um, there are a variety of ways you get assessed uh, to get your final grades. Um, and what it is, we try and vary it up so that you're not just writing essays and assessment. So you might get uh, assessed, say, giving a presentation individually or as a group. There might be practical activities that you'll be assessed on, such as in leadership and teamwork. Uh, there'll be times where you'll create an online video or a podcast, and that will go to cover your part of your assessment. Again, so posters and leaflets, videos, uh, and things like that. One of the final ones, which is a new addition, is the, our external assessments, which there's only two throughout the two years, one in your first year and one in your second. So, why choose us? Uh, a Blackpool Sixth Form, uh, it's still a relative new course, we're, we're still under 10 years old, but staff have put a lot of hard work into making the course so unique and, and like no other course. We have an extensive range of trips and visits that involve 
all the major players in the protective services, from the armed forces to emergency services, as well as other services such as the prison service. We've got staff that have got knowledge and expertise within the industry. Um, our success rate with our past students is phenomenal, and we've got people uh, who have studied the course serving in all aspects of jobs, um, which shows that our career progression is of the highest category. So on this slide, as you can see, we've got a few examples of our live learning and the different things we get you to. Uh, some of our major trips, such as New York, where you'll get to visit the 9-11 Memorial. We'll visit local fire and police stations and do a few touristy things, such as Madison Square Garden as well. You get the chance to go to Poland and to Krakow, where you get to see, visit Auschwitz, uh, Holocaust camp, and look at some of the... Um, areas around there, as well as getting introduced to the city centre, and as Paul enjoyed so much, the electric scooters. Uh, also London, where you'll visit the House of Parliament, the Imperial War Museum, and look at some of the other sites, such, such as Buckingham Palace and Trafalgar Square. And as you can see, many, many more day trips that you'll have chance to do. So some of the most common progression routes from the college, uh, from our past students involve um, careers within the prison service. They're, they're always recruiting and we've got about five or six in the past three years alone and now working as prison officers. Um, the constabulary is, is always a popular one with probably more than 50% of the cohort having initial ambitions to be in the police. Uh, and we're lucky enough, we've got around about seven or eight former students who are serving in a variety of constabularies up and around the country. Uh, the RAF is proving more and more popular now as well as the Royal Navy and more recently the Ambulance Service. But we will ensure that staff are here to support you through the enrolment process whilst you're in college. And we will stay in touch with you and support you in your, in your career outside the college too. So this is one of our ex-students who I've taught as well as Paul, Sean Andrews. He left us with top grades, so that's triple distinction star, which is the equivalent of three A star levels, um, uh, uh, three A stars at A level. Um, and he's gone on to gain entry in the RAF as a weapons analyst. And as it says, he's already been deployed to Cyprus and Canada. And um, going a bit further back, this is Tash Marshall, who again achieved a triple distinction star uh, in 2016. Um, she was working at a, a paint shop on Mowbray Drive whilst at college, and she's now part of an armed response team in the police, working at White Hills Station in, in London, which is right near where Parliament is. Right, and just to keep you up to date with what we do, we've given you a few of our usernames for social media, such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Paul's favourite, TikTok. So please follow us uh, and just keep your eye on what we're up to, and hopefully we'll see you in the near future. See you later, folks. See ya. Okay, here we go. Yeah, thanks. Thanks very much, guys, for those uh, th those presentations. Hopefully, they were uh, informative for you. Um, we've got some questions coming in, which is great. Uh, I'll take the first couple. Um, the first one is: Do you have? I'll I'll, I'll pitch these two together. Uh, do you have a basketball club, and can anyone join? Uh, and the, the the next one is: uh, Is the fitness room free to use for anyone at Blackpool Six? Well, in relation to both of those, we have a, an extensive um, enrichment program, six extra program, which uh, includes activities, uh, anything from um, K-pop, French, Japanese, um, book club, um, as well as all our uh, sports activities. So all our um, sports academies uh, are part of that six extra program. So our football teams, netball teams, um, rugby uh, and basketball. So in answer to you, the first question, yes, we do have a vibrant basketball club, uh, boys and girls, um, and they train regularly once a week uh, and are engaged in matches, um, usually on a Wednesday afternoon, but sometimes uh, uh, on, on other e afternoon stroke evenings as well. Uh, and we'll also in relation to the uh, fitness room, yes, we do have a um, fitness room and we don't charge and it is free to use for, for any student. You don't necessarily have to be a sports student at college. Any student can access the fitness room uh, after an induction um, and, uh, and support in relation to how to use it. OK, next question. This one uh, is a protective services question. So this one's going to go to Steve. 
Uh, so I'll read it out. I, I want to do a double in public, uh, sorry, in protect, public protective services or protective services, as it's going to be called, uh, to become a police officer, but struggling to know what other subject you would suggest. So, Steve, uh, what would you do? Okay, well... The good, the good thing is you can choose uh, whatever you want. If you want to keep it more focused around the police, uh, we would suggest something like um, A-level psychology or sociology, um, looking at how groups form and um, the psychology around people's behaviour. Uh, but we also offer a criminology course as well. Um, and a lot of our students this year who want to go into the police have, joined, have done the double uh, and worked on, on top of that with the uh, A-level criminology, uh, which seems to work married quite well. So we will, we'll teach you about um, the whole process of um, custodial care, so going through to court, uh, straight from the arrest, uh, booking um, potential criminals in, the court process, uh, what happens in prison, the rehabilitation programme, etc. And that links quite nicely to the A-level criminology. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks. I think j just in addition to that, I know the police are not not particularly um, too concerned about combinations of, uh, uh, of of courses or or subjects. And public services obviously gives a really good foundation for for movement on into police. And if it was the double and another subject, I think that the key thing is it's something that you particularly enjoy, something that you particularly can do well at to get those good grades to go on and uh, and use that perhaps at, at university. But the, the suggestions Steve's given there are, gr are great. Okay, so we'll keep Steve on his toes with a with another question here. In uh, public services, do you do much on firefighting? Okay, um, if you don't mind, I'll link it to the next question as well, which is how much paramedics do we learn in the public service? In Super. public services? Um, it's as a course as a whole, it's generic. Um, so we generalise it across the green light, um, the blue light, and also the volunteer um, services so like mountain rescue, army, etc. But the great thing is, is you can tailor your assignments to the service that you want to do. So when we look at fitness testing and entry requirements for the service, you would link your assignment to paramedics or army firefighters, etc. We work with all of the um, services within Blackpool as well. So we've done, uh, we provided students to do a, um, a mock terrorist incident where our students were acting as casualties, etc. In a Blackpool mock uh, terrorism attack, where we worked with the fire brigade, police, and paramedics, and our students were used as casualties um, to see how they would deal with a situation uh, like that in Blackpool. So we will work about around the different um, the different services, but it is in a more of a general uh, term. And then you guys, when you go to do your assignments, you'll focus more on that particular area. So when we look at London bombings or anything like that, we'll talk about what the police. Um, paramedics and the firefighters did and then in your assignment you would focus on that particular service that you're interested in yeah, yeah and again in, in in addition to that you know any sort of volunteering or, or work related experience you can get around those um, particular services that you're particularly more interested in we we would support you with that albeit slightly difficult in the current circumstances but there are there are opportunities to to gain some form of, of experience to support you with your applications moving forward Okay, uh, Steve, again, I think it's public services all the way at the moment. Um, is the public services triple better than doing a double plus an A-level for joining the RAF? Um, well, it depends on what department you want to go into, um, but it wouldn't hinder you either one you did, to be honest. Um, we've had success uh, with a lot of students that have gone into the RAF. Um, I'm trying to think back to names, but we've had a female student who's gone in to do... Um, social social network uh, analysis where she would basically look at when you've got someone that's quite high up in the RAF, she would look at their social media, look at their um, electoral role they uh, address and stuff to see if they were at high risk of being um, kidnapped and used as ransom. Um, so she looks at what details she can get of them. We've had students like you've seen on the um, pictures that mm. will go off and join the RAF um, to do lo lots of different um, sectors, um, including pilots as well. We've had uh, students that have had their single pilot's license as well. Okay, hopefully, hopefully that's uh, that's answered your question. Another one here related to the um, the ambulance service. Um, if I want to go into the ambulance service, can I do that by going to this college? Uh, and do you go to work placements to get an insight into the course? I think um probably in, in, in relation to that question it might be that you don't mean uh, an insight into the course because you'll get a great insight into the course i think it's probably more of an insight into um uh the ambulance service and the work that the ambulance team does so 
I, I think as Steve has already said, I'll give him a little breather, but he can come in in a minute. Um, you know, we do do a lot of work around a, a multitude of um, public um, services, protective services. And that's the beauty of the course in the fact that it is not just pigeonholed into one particular service or two particular services. We do have students that come onto the course, you know, with a with a real vision of um, talking of vision right on cue there. Jen's just been able to, to join us um, with a real vision of what particular service they want to go on. And then by experiencing another service, perhaps, or another um, uh, organisation, they've actually actually changed their mind. So the key is to get that little bit of broad breadth experience and knowledge. But, yeah, there, there is that real opportunity to, to, to get that understanding and that, you know, you know that, that real detailed knowledge of a particular service, as Steve said, through the assignments you do and perhaps through some additional volunteering or, or work placement. Steve, is there anything else you want to say about the, the ambulance service? Uh, yeah, in terms of the pl uh, placement, we don't do placements as such because it's quite hard um, mm. to almost have like a ride along with paramedics or do that. We have the paramedics come in. Um, we also talk to um, other public services, like Tim said, so you might choose to go into the army as a medic and then after your three, five years stint there, go straight into paramedics in uh, civilian uh, life. Uh, and just going back to, if I can just go back to the police as well, it's the same. A lot of students want to go into police, but then decide, actually, I'm going to join the military police first in the army, tour the world a little bit for five, six years, and then go into civilian police later on. Uh, so we don't do a, a placement block as such, but you'll ha we'll have uh, trips to paramedics um, headquarters and stuff. We have paramedics come into the college to talk to you as well. Um, so you'll have plenty of uh, opportunity to speak to them. Yeah. OK, thanks, Steve. Yeah. And again, that this one links into the next question is what course would you suggest to become a firefighter? Because I've applied for BTEC Public Services. Uh, I think between the, the three of us in the department, you're probably applying for the, the best course as, a, as an inroad into uh, becoming a firefighter. The, the, the triple extended diploma in BTEC Public Services will give you a real grounding and understanding in a variety of different units associated with um, uh, a career in in public services um firefighting being one of those yeah sorry and just to pick up on that uh again not just firefighter in lancashire etc we've got students that are in the RAF currently um, yeah. as firefighters and um, so again they get to tour a bit of the world currently stationed uh, up near huddersfield i think but uh yeah they, they're they're a firefighter but they've gone into the RAF instead so they got paid for the training etc yeah OK, the next one is uh, how do I apply for the sports course? That's that's just uh, a general, a normal application, a general application to the college. Um, it's the, it's an online application, so you'd be able to access that. And there's probably information in one of the more generic um, uh, presentations as part of the open day or indeed to, to go onto the website and you'll uh, be able to see the uh, how to apply or where to apply. Um, area for that and it's uh, and it's through that online application and that will be followed up by our um, uh, ALM team a student liaison and marketing team who will uh, contact you once they've received your application there's one for Jen Jen um, a level PE uh, what level would you have to be performing at I think this student particularly means not from a practical point of view uh, in relation to the, the, the practical subjects that or practical um, sports and activities that Steph referred to? Um, so ideally we'd be looking at someone uh, who's regularly competing um, at very minimally club level. Um, ideally for the higher scores we look at uh, people who are at county level but we certainly wouldn't say no to anybody who was regularly participating at club level um, and was willing to, uh, to to get the footage um, from there from performing and competing um, and then we, we'd obviously look at it review it and see if, uh, how how to get a better score um, and maybe provide a second a second set of footage for us um, to use as evidence yeah and I think when Jen refers to footage, she's talking about the video footage that, that of, of performing. And a lot of that will depend on um, what, what particular sport or activity it is. But um, the, uh, the exam board requires us to have video footage of practical performance, which uh, our teachers, um, Steph and Claire, will then assess. And then that's again looked at by an external moderator in, in relation to the, the marks or the grades awarded. So obviously the higher the level practical performance or the higher the level the ability and that's demonstrated in that in that video footage the higher mark for that particular aspect of it 
Um, bearing in mind, that's from a performance point of view. Obviously, there is a coaching arm or a coaching stream to that as well, as Steph mentioned in, in her presentation. So, a, again, you know, coaching on a regular basis and a routine basis and developing those coaching skills is also very, very uh, worthwhile as well. Uh, next one uh, for Steve. Um, do you do anything on riot control? Uh, yeah, so not currently, just because of the current situation with um, COVID and stuff. Um, mixing students with 200 police officers training with riot training uh, isn't ideal. Uh, but if you go on our social media, uh, Instagram in particular, um, and our Facebook, you'll you'll see previous riot, riot training that we've done, and which we want we will continue once um, the pandemic is over and once we're, we're allowed to do it. Uh, but we, we will learn about riot control in your assignments, but to give you that practical element and demonstrate it, we work with Lancashire Police um, and we will go and act as rioters, the students will, um, with uh, the police officers while they're training uh, to riot, which if you look on our social media, the students love it. Um, they're given wooden wooden blocks that uh, emulate bricks uh, and encouraged to throw them at police officers' name for their helmets uh, on the heads. Um, and it's an experience of showing you what the police would actually do uh, in a right situation with us acting as uh, writers. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. And, and the police talk you talk our students through what, what it's like and what they need to do. So it's a real sort of first hand experience. Um, yeah, and we, and we will, sorry, we will mix as well with. So you've got the, the, the regular police, um, which a combination of different departments. Uh, we talk and work with the dog handlers there and also the horse mounted uh, police as well. So we'll speak to them afterwards during lunch. We have lunch with them, etc. Uh, and they'll talk about what their roles are in the services. OK, thanks. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any more questions out there. We've just got one more um, uh, in our chat box at the minute. So if there are any more questions out there that you, you, you're desperate to, uh, to to get answered, just pop them in the chat box now oh, um, and, uh, and, and we, we can have a answer those while we're here. Obviously, if something comes to mind after we've gone off uh, or, or the presentation in the open day is finished, then please just e email them into college, email them into um, Blackpool Six Inquiries. And uh, one of the experts, myself, Steve, Jen, or indeed one, one of our teachers will be able to pick that up and, uh, and respond back to you most definitely. So the, the next question is, how long is a public services course? Uh, all, the, all the courses, well, the public services course is a two year course. So it's an extended diploma, the equivalent of three A levels, uh, and that's taken over two years, starting in September, usually end of August, September in your first year, and going through to uh, usually the end of May in your in in the second year, which is which is standard for all uh, pretty much all level three courses. So all level three courses at the college as well. Uh, good question there. What would you the next one really? I suppose we can all chip into this one. Um, what what would your timetable look like for a public services course? Uh, so if I if I start, I suppose in a, in a way uh, we. As I said at the beginning, it, for the extended diploma in public services, which is the equivalent of three A levels, that would take up um, all of your time at college. And what I mean by all of your time at college, you'd, you'd not necessarily be doing any other subjects alongside that. And that would be the equivalent of 12 lessons. Um, now, currently, obviously, uh, our, our timetables are, are COVID, COVID secure in the fact that we're working in bubbles. So a student's timetable for extended diploma in public services uh, is done over three days. Um, uh, and they would have four lessons in, a, in one unit on each, each of those days, four separate, uh, sorry, three separate days, three separate units all going at the same time, three separate teachers usually. Um, and in the normal circumstances, that, that timetable would be spread out over the week. Uh, in addition to those 12 sessions or those 12 lessons, which will be a combination of, of practical and, and theoretical lessons, obviously. But in addition to those, there'd be a pastoral mentor session, which is a bit like a, a personal tutor or a, a form teacher at school uh, situation. You have one session with those. Uh, and it may be that some students may be taking a reset English or a reset maths um, GCSE maths alongside their extended diploma. Obviously, we want you to work as hard as you can in both your, in all your GCSEs. But um, you know, obviously, uh, if a student uh, 
does slightly miss out on their on their GCSE English and, and or maths, there is an opportunity to to do that here. But we really want you to to, to try and get that sorted as, uh, as uh, through school. Really, anybody want to add anything else to the the timetable? Jen, Steve, no, nope. happy with that. Yeah. Yeah, OK. Um, obviously, also, we mentioned our enrichment programme. You've got an opportunity to do a variety of, uh, of enrichment activities around that. Unfortunately, curtailed a little bit, you know, shortened a little bit at the moment because of the current circumstances. But we do have our enrichment on demand. We are running uh, some of our, our, our sports uh, academies at the moment as well. So we're obviously hoping when things gradually move back to a more normal uh, situation that our, our our college-wide enrichment will will grow again. Okay, there's, there's no more questions uh, come through on the chat box at the minute, so that just leaves us to say uh, thanks very much for attending the Sport Tourism and Protective Services Open Day. Like I said, if you do have any questions that, that, that come to mind at the end uh, and we've gone, just please email them in and we can uh, we can respond to those. Hopefully it's been really informative for you and we look forward to uh, A, receiving your application and B, um, seeing you in the, in the very, very near future. Thank you very much.